staying with us, I'm Tom Griffith. And I'm Jennifer Vaughn. Parents, teachers, and students have a lot of questions right now as we get ready for an unusual year of learning. And with some plans changing almost daily, it is a lot to take in. So we invited New Hampshire Education Commissioner Frank Edelblue to join us live tonight to help provide some clarity for all, all of us. Good evening to Commissioner. It's nice to see you again. Thanks for answering some more questions. Good evening. I'm happy to be here and thank you so much for doing this. I think this is a great opportunity uh, for our communities. Okay, we have a lot of questions for you. I'm going to jump right in. This one is from Jennifer, who wants to know what happens if a child with an IEP falls behind because of remote learning struggles. Yes, yeah, so it, what we've done in our reopening guidelines is try to create an environment that is going to be safe for staff and students alike. We know that many of our schools are going to be starting in either a hybrid or a remote model, but even where a school district has hybrid or remote, they still have the ability to bring in students for services. And so we are encouraging all of our districts to support their students with individualized education programs by bringing them in and getting them the services and the supports that they need. Commissioner, John wants to know why children are being told to social distance three to six feet in schools when the CDC recommends six to ten feet of social distancing. Yes, so that's laid out in our school reopening guidelines. Six feet is ideal, but we know that's not always possible. But we also know that research supports that three feet of distance is actually efficacious as well in terms of preventing the spread of COVID virus droplets, which is the primary mechanism for spreading. And so we have relied on that science in recommending uh, if, if schools are not able to attain six feet, that three feet is also efficacious and useful in that school environment. Okay, the next question comes from Jessica, who's asking tonight, what happens when a district has an excellent remote learning and in-person plan for grades K through eight, but has an extremely inadequate remote learning plan for nine through 12 that relies on VLAX or an option with nearly no face-to-face -face online instruction? So I know that our district leaders across the state have been working hard to craft plans that are both really strong for the students to give them a, uh, a good and enriching and really challenging learning experience. Um, so I would encourage you, if you have questions about the reopening plan in your district, particularly for your secondary school students, that you reach out to your principal, you reach out to your superintendent, and help work with them and share with them the concerns that you have so that there's still plenty of time to be working on these plans and modifying our approach so that we can be providing all of our students really great opportunities for learning. And finally, our last question for you tonight comes in from John, who asked on our Facebook page if there are any places he can take his child for remote learning help. Both parents work and she cannot stay home alone. Uh, so again, I would encourage you to reach out to your superintendent and express the concern that you have about not being able to provide the right kinds of supports at home for an effective uh, remote learning option and that I would encourage you as well to reach into your community. What we have seen across the state is that there are many community centers and community resources that are popping up to help support those parents that really need to go back to work and where a kind of a hybrid model of two days or three days a week is not effective for their family. And so I would again encourage you to reach out there. Education Commissioner Frank Edelblue, thanks as always for spending some time answering questions with us tonight. We appreciate it. Again, thank you so much and thank you for what you're doing.